In this coding exercise, we're going to walk through how we can convert from two different types of data collections in Ruby. So we're going to start with a regular array, but we need to convert that into a hash. Now there are a number of ways that we could do this. There are even pretty traditional hash converter methods in Ruby, but we have a little bit of a special twist that we need to do. We need to convert an array to a hash, but we need the keys of the hash to be the index, and then the value needs to be the element. So we have a good example right here. This is going to be an array of the, quick, brown, and fox. So it's going to have four elements in the array, and we need to convert this into a hash where the first element is going to be zero. It's gonna have a key of zero, which is the index of the first element, and then it's gonna have the first word. Then the next hash, is, or the next element in the hash is going to have a key of one, which is the index value of quick, and then the value is gonna be quick. Then the next one is going to be two, which is brown, so on and so forth. So all we need to essentially do is not just convert this from a hash or from an array to a hash, but we also need to be able to grab this index value and essentially just convert that to be the key. And one other item you may notice is with the way this is set up and the way we're expected to call it is that we should be able to simply pass the message or the method of index hash to the array, which means that we're going to have to open up the array class. So let's start by doing that. I'm gonna say class array, and inside of this, I'm going to implement that method. So I'm gonna say def, index underscore hash, and this is not gonna take any arguments. We have access to the array because we are opening up the array class, and that is one of the kind of nice benefits of monkey patching here. So now that we have that, I can say self dot each with object, which is an enumerable method, and this is going to allow us to just simply pipe all of the information right in to a new hash. And we know because we're passing in hash as an argument to this method that it's going to create a hash for us. So now I can say do, and whenever you use each with object and you pass in a object, in this case a hash, we have access to two variables, two block variables. The first one is gonna represent the item that we're iterating over. So in other words, this is gonna re represent the for the first time, then quick, then brown, and then fox. Now the next argument, the next block argument here, is going to represent the hash. Now don't let yourself think that you have to call this hash. You could call this ASDF if you wanted to. Now I wouldn't recommend that because that wouldn't be very intuitive to read. Usually you'll see something like this simply because if you need to go and look at this or another developer is going to look at your code, we want to be clear on what the hash value actually is. So this is more of just a readability thing than, uh, than required naming. So now that we have that, how can we add elements to a hash? There's a pretty basic syntax and it is to call the name of the hash which in this case is hash, then we pass in what the key is gonna be by using the bracket syntax, so I can say hash, and because we know that we want the values, or I should say we want the keys in the hash to be the indexes, we need to be able to grab this index. So how exactly can we do that? Well, there is a very cool little method, I'm not sure if you've used it before, and it's actually called index and you need to pass in the actual item, and I made a little mistake here, this needs to be self. So the way that this works is the self is the array. Remember, whenever we call self on a class, we mean that instantiation. So when we're calling index hash, self is gonna be, in this case, the quick brown fox. So this is going to call the array, and then it's gonna pass this index method and then you pass in the item. So I think that this 
code right here is, if you've never seen this before, is not the most intuitive if you've never used this index method. So let's take a really base case scenario. Actually, this would be bad. Uh, I'm not gonna use numbers because that may be confusing. I'm just gonna say, hi, there, Johnny. So we have an array here. Let's call the index method on this case. And let's say that we go and we want to pass in there. So there, in this case, is the first element, or I should say it has an index value of one. It's a second element in the array. And so what this should return is the number one. So we have an array. We're calling index on it, and we're passing in the value that we want the index of. So now if I run this, this should return one, and, oh, looks like we have a little syntax error. Let me run this through again, and it's probably because, yes, it's just something that we have in the method itself. I'll close that off and now come down to the bottom, run it again, and there you go you can see that it's one. So right here, this is exactly what we're doing. Now this is separate from our real implementation, but I wanted to show you that because index method isn't exactly something that someone relatively new to Ruby sees on a day in day out basis. But what we're doing is we're calling the array when we call self right here. Index is going to then be passed the item. So the first time item is going to be the. So it's going to pass in the to index, which is then being called on the array. So it's going to be zero. The next time it's going to go through and it's going to be one, two, three, so on and so forth. So that is going to set the key value. And now what we have to do is set what the item is going to be. In this case, it is item. This is going to set the value. So now let's come down here. I'm going to copy our, uh, our nice array and let me indent this. And so now what I can do is I can just call array dot index hash. And now this should give us the exact result we're looking for. And there you go. That's perfect. So you see what we have now? We have a hash. It has all of the keys as the index values, and then the actual items, the elements, all the string values, those are the values in the hash. So let me come here, and I'm going to clear all of this out, and let's actually run the test just to verify that everything is working. So I'm gonna run RSpec, February, and this one I believe is February, fourth, unless I'm mistaken. Let's run that. Oh, and it looks like, oh, it looks like I tested the wrong item. That was yesterday's. Sorry, I'm actually filming a number of these all at one time, so some of these days are kind of getting mixed in. And let's see, so this is going to be RSpec, February, and this is the fifth. That's right. Running that and that all passes, so which we kind of knew it would since we already tested it out down below. But just to kind of review what's going on here, we opened up the array class. From there, we added a new method called index hash that could be called on any array elements. From there, we used the enumerable method of each with object, which allowed us to create a new hash. And then, because each with object takes a block, we passed in a set of key value pairs where we were able to grab the index value for each item and then passed in the item itself as the value. So if you went through that, great job. You now know how to not only convert an array to a hash, but also how to grab the index item for each one of those array elements and use it as the key.